Here with Scenic Becco inside the Mayweather Boxing Club. Guy that was around here for a few years, but been gone for a little bit and uh, back for these past couple months. First of all, Cena, you were in in Nashville. What, what led to your uh, trip back there? Well, um, it was a, I, I decided to make the move at a time when I wasn't very happy in Las Vegas, and I felt like I needed to go to a place where I could like uh, focus more on my fundamentals. And you know, till date, I, I think it's you know one of the best decisions I made in my life because it, it allowed me, um, you know, the the time. And then, of course, resources being out there, you know, there's like tremendous resources out there that a lot of people don't know that I found that I tapped into. So it's helped really like a lot with my uh, with my training, my fundamentals. And I feel like I'm a much more complete fighter right now. And that's why I'm back here, you know, to like make use of the connections here to take my career to the next level. Well, like I said you're 21 and one, but you probably had the I'm sure the biggest fight of your life coming up against Brian Vera, a very tough guy. He's, he's been. Retired, not retired a couple times over the past few years, but a lot of people know him as uh, with his fight with uh, Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. First fight he arguably won. So this for you, you know, 21-1 is impressive, but a big step up for you. How are you approaching this fight? What do you think about stepping up in competition? Well, I'm definitely approaching it as I've approached any other fight before this, uh, this one, like a world championship fight. You know, I took a, a three-year break, and then after that, I've had uh, six fights. I've won all six. And every one of those I approached like it was a world championship fight. So uh, there's definitely, I mean, as a step up, there's also the tendency to, you know, think too much about it or, you know, he's an older guy. He's, re he's retired. He's come out of retirement, you know, and um, there's also the tendency to underrate him. So it's like, oh, like underestimate him. So, um, you know, you just have to thread a certain line and work hard. I'm doing my best. I'm, I'm not worried about what he's bringing to the table. I'm more concerned with what I'm working on, and on fight night, you know, I'll bring all my tools uh, to to the show. <laughs> are you are you looking at this as like a fight to kind of introduce yourself? You know, coming out party for you. So like I said, a a tougher caliber opponent here, so to kind of show everybody, hey, you're the real deal, and you belong competing for some of these titles. Yes, absolutely, 100%. Uh, I've been begging my manager, you know, to have me going, even as the B side against one of these top names, because I know I'm ready. I feel I'm ready. I, I believe it, you know, and I'm ready to like take the stage. And I feel like my time is overdue. But hey, you know, everything happens, you know, when it's supposed to happen. So this fight will give me a chance to, you know, uh, announce myself to the world and tell them that hey, I'm coming, you know. And um, hopefully after this uh, fight. I'll get you know a lot more opportunities against a lot more um, skill fighters, and then be able to prove myself that I'm ready for the world stage. What's this gym like? I saw a guy a little testing here the other day. Did some sparring. Uh, what? How are the the guys treating you here? And and what's it like in this gym compared to maybe some other gyms that you trained in? I mean, over here it's like you know there's a lot of fierce competition, and you know as with envir as with environments where you know there are a lot of top. Uh, athletes, there tends to be a lot of tension. Sometimes a lot of um, I've had a, like you know I've gotten into like two altercations since I've been here. And I've only been here like what seven weeks, but then it tells you that yeah you know it's a high level caliber and you know uh, the fact that you know people you're getting under people's skins means you're doing something right you know so um, it, it's definitely a good environment to be in. It's very easy to get distracted, but if you're focused, you know there's so much to learn and tap into and learn from. For those that don't know, your brother, of course, is former world champion Joseph Ikbeko. What's it like having someone like that to be able to draw from and you know learn from his experiences? Well, yeah, he um, he he definitely you know has been there. It's nice to look up to him and other people from my country, you know, who have uh, accomplished the same thing on the same level, and we have a current world champion. So you know, just having people that close to you that have achieved it makes you realize that yeah it's it's you know it's definitely attainable and and it's a part of the reason why you know I haven't given up I've, I've encountered a lot of obstacles managerial you know like financial like so many situations that I've had to overcome over the course of uh, my seven you know seven year pro career but I'm still going strong and I feel like you know um, having all those people close uh, gives me you know the the reason to keep going I know that it's doable and I'm hell-bent on becoming world champion who are some of the guys that you looked up to growing up, you know, maybe from Africa and your country? Yeah, definitely Azuma Nelson and Aikote was one of my biggest guys because he has like, you know, that 
uh, powerful jab. And, you know, I like to think of myself as having, you know, an equally powerful and fast jab. So I, look, I definitely looked up to Azuma Nelson. I looked up to Aikorte. And then uh, more recently, uh, of course, Joseph. And then uh, Joshua Clarte. You know, I had a chance to meet all these people. Azuma Nelson, he, uh, I had a chance to have him mentor me. Like, he mentored me throughout my amateur and pro career. He gave me a lot of good advice, you know, that I still hold on to. So these guys, you know, were all really close to me. And um, they're guys that, you know, I draw inspiration from. And, and I, I just want to get to the level that they got to and beyond. All right, well, you know, you moved to, to the United States from Africa in, in 2013. What's it been like that the transition over here to the United States from, you know, Ghana? Well, uh, most of what I've had to deal with has, has to do with the boxing and, and the level of it. It doesn't really have to do with the lifestyle. Um, a lot of um, the television back home is, you know, filled with content from Western, uh, from, you know, uh, uh, the, the Western, you know, side of the world. So I kind of had an idea what to expect coming here. So uh, nothing was too strange. There wasn't any cultural shock. But most of my adjustments has had to uh, be with boxing. And uh, I feel that, you know, I've adjusted pretty well. Uh, it, it's a lot more technical. There's a lot more, men uh, there's a lot more of the mental aspect to this, it's, as opposed to just, you know, being tough, you know. So I definitely have, um, adjusted to that and I'm slowly working my way to being the best around here yeah so you get homesick oh very much so yeah but um you know even my aunt you know like she I grew up with my aunt she um I tell her all the time I miss her but she's like hey you know I want you to stay focused and um do what you gotta do you know win the world championships make some money before you come home so but we they, they make it easy we get to face them all the time video chat so it makes it a, a little easier but I do get homesick yeah all right, so you got this fight with Brian Bear coming up. You win this, let's say, go through that, flying colors. What's next for you? I'm absolutely looking at some of the big names in the division, and I think that uh, the direction my management wants to go, we're looking at um, winning maybe a continental title. So next year will be like uh, setting myself up for a world title. If it comes sooner than expected, I'm absolutely ready for it and we'll take it. But you know the politics of politics of boxing and a lot of things have to you know be done a certain way so we're looking at maybe winning a continental belt you know beating some good names and then setting myself up for a world title shot at the end of 2019 your brother I think two-time world champion three-time world champion are you guys competitive you know are you tell them I'm coming for your uh, record um, well it's like it's very hard to like you know say anything to him right now since I haven't gotten close to him but once I get the first one in the taunting will start yeah so we'll see yeah uh, and then finally what we always joke in the gym but you are for those who don't know you senior you are a physical freak oh we can show that that's yeah it looks just like me what happened to Joseph man he's like half your size of course he's in great shape too but man I, I don't know maybe I don't know sometimes maybe I ate all the food <laughs> What, what is your secret? I mean, obviously, it does. we're talking about some good genetics, but obviously a lot of hard work goes into that. What do you do to keep yourself in ridiculous shape all the time? Yeah, it's a consistency, you know. It's not allowing a single excuse, any form of excuse. So I'm always constantly, constantly working out. And when, and when I go, like, grocery shopping, that's where you make all the decisions. If you buy anything you shouldn't eat, you're going to eat it at home so that's where it's tough and that's why I make all the decisions so I, I, I eat pretty healthy like clean all year round I cook every single day I cook my own meals have you ever cheated have you ever been to McDonald's or Burger King or anything I haven't been to McDonald's or Burger King but I do cheat like with pizza with a lot of ice cream with candy candy's my weakness gummy worms are my weakness so I do like allow myself you know like uh, you know room to like eat certain things that I enjoy obviously life is meant to be enjoyed so but for the most part I stay disciplined. I work really hard, extremely hard. Most days that I train three times daily: conditioning, boxing, and road work. You know, so it's like it's a lot of consistent stuff done over the last maybe 14 years. So it's it's easy for a lot of people to say genetics, but genetics isn't getting up at 4 a.m. or sometimes 2 a.m. to go do the work. So yeah. Well, you know you're in good shape when other guys in the gym are jealous about how good a shape you're in. Uh, just finally, so wrap this up. Where the fight, where, when, how can we see it if we can, and your social media stuff so people can follow you. Yes, I will provide a link um, on my social media page. Uh, so my Instagram is assassination, A S S A S S I underscore nation. Yes, and um, and then of course Facebook is just my name, Senag Beko. So I'll uh, I'll share the uh, the link to to watch the the fight live uh, come December 8th. It's going to be in Murfreesboro, Tennessee, and. Um, 
I'm looking to add another win and then step up, you know, step up in the right direction towards a world championship. All right, man. Best of luck to you. Look forward to seeing you in the, going forward. Good luck, buddy.